My name is Lake Jafis, and I was trained as an architect, but am now primarily practicing as a visual artist. I work in a variety of media from traditional analog to digital and more recently to larger public art installations. Ideas come from all over the place, particularly shanty megastructures and then earlier the city settlements and the urban growth strategies. I was just fascinated with large scale developments city planning, the way cities may grow and evolve from a kind of almost abstracted macro scale. I was just interested in kind of re-envisioning or re-imagining different urban typologies from sort of North African or Middle Eastern kind of labyrinthine sort of cities to more informal or self-organized settlement and then sort of projecting them into a future driven by also my interest and love of science fiction as a lens through which to critique contemporary political, economic, environmental realities. Rotten It Labors and Legacies is a public art installation that is in Waterfront Park in Alexandria, Virginia. And one of the things that was very profound and super present, but not really present, I personally didn't know that Alexandria, Virginia had the largest slave trading firm, uh, domestic slave trading firm in the United States. It ties into not only the conversations around Confederate monuments, but this country's kind of lack of really reckoning with what slavery was. I, of course, knew there was a domestic slave trade. There has to be because slaves, you know, obviously. But but we learned so much more about the, uh, you know, the Atlantic slave trade. The fact that we don't, that, that, that we haven't really confronted these histories, it's very much because of the slave economy. I was interested in kind of acknowledging that through the installation by creating these figures that face the water in terms of the actual design of their, their intersecting metal profiles. And those metal profiles just have a bunch of references to the city itself, the wrought iron gates, but the iconography and kind of the symbolism of the figures embodying the major commercial and industrial merchant history of the city of Alexandria. The idea that that is deep, deeply connected to both the labor of enslaved Black folks as well as the free community. Pandemic and revolution occurred and, and, and all of the, you know, tearing down of the Confederate monuments. Because in a sense, it's a monument in, in, in and of itself or it memorializes or it acknowledges the history, right? The slave trading history of, of, of Alexandria and the United States in, in, in general. And in a way presents a sort of interesting or a different take on reimagining a monument because these figures don't identify any one person. The Confederate monuments are all about lionizing a very specific individual, sanitizing their history and, you know, painting them as great generals or, or, or what have you. So the, the Shirley Chisholm Monument Commission, part of the She Built Initiative for New York, which is to create, again, within the conversations of all of these Confederate monuments and monuments to, you know, white the white males, is just really looking at uh, creating monuments dedicated to, to, to women. Both Amanda and I, we have a very similar background. We both attended Cornell University. We both create work heavily rooted in that background, but are practicing as artists, right? And we both have recently moved in the past few years into creating public art installations. So we approach this project kind of from thinking of it more of a sort of architectural project in a sense, and really thinking about, you know, not only how incredible Shirley Chisholm was, but also the fact that this is a sort of gateway into a park. We thought about this very much in terms of circulation around or through our submission. We also wanted it to be kind of large. I think ours was the largest submission scale-wise. We didn't really want to be subtle because our personality wasn't a subtle personality, you know? Combination of a kind of the history of, of the sort of garden gates as a threshold into a park. Um, 
were a lot of the things that we took into account um, and a sort of circular circulation, the fact that there were multiple vantage points to this entrance and to the art installation, um, the fact that you can see it from 10 blocks away, right? The fact that there's a clear viewing angle from, from 10 blocks away, um, but that the majority of people who see it will be spilling out of the subway um, or headed into the subway one block away. Our submission is sort of these three large profiles that kind of rotate around, right, and create multiple angles where in some instances you see this sort of kind of ornate filigree, right, with kind of vegetation. And then in another vantage point, you'll see, you know, Shirley Chisholm's profile wanting to kind of challenge the, the monuments or what it means to memorialize someone. Um, but then use kind of just architectural strategy, right, as, 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 as like a means to actually do that. My future is first draw on exacerbating existing conditions, so I don't imagine that it's too far into the future. I've been interested in projecting Black folks into the future and being seen, you know, and, and particularly the idea of sort of overlooked or marginalized communities where they may lie in the future. Future from a Western standpoint is always very sort of homogenized in almost every aspect, from the architecture, to the clothing. Why is specifically Western view of, uh, you know, this technological advancement is the thing that determines something to be advanced. And I really want to think more of just kind of self-organizing systems, organic systems, ones that operate in concert with kind of the natural environment and sort of the evolution of, of these environments. With something like Shanty Mega Structure, sort of two parts. I was interested in in general critique of urban development across the world. So I was interested in in kind of a broad critique of that, and then looking at at marginalized communities. The statistics for Lagos, Nigeria, is something like I think some 65 percent of the population lives in a slum settlement, showing visibility for these communities in the future, then acknowledging some of the practices, you know, some of the sustainable practices that occur within those communities, both as a function of necessity, but also as a, as a function of just creativity and ingenuity. Again, being driven by science fiction and its usefulness and examining, examining various realities. I decided to imagine a world where climate change and the sort of dangers of fossil fuels was discovered around the 70s, when it was, you know, actually in reality. <laughs> in this world, the sort of climate crisis is really ever present around the late 70s. U.S., particularly the government, begins to enact certain policies and, and legislation to curtail um, mass transit. So I, I focus on New York. And so the idea of this world is that there's a mobility credit and people are allotted a you know, certain amount of mobility credits that will enable them to travel. And once they've used those mobility credits, then they cannot travel. We added back in capitalist aspect of it and made mobility credits transferable and saleable. So of course this means that those who have more access to money can buy them. So the rich begin to buy up and shore up mobility credits. And in some aspects, poorer communities begin to hoard and also trade mobility credits. People who live in this community can no longer travel outside of the borough. And so what that world looks like. And then just reimagining the kind of architecture, architecture both in, in the sense of actual architecture and architecture in the sense of the kind of structures that these communities mobilize to create, right? To navigate this new kind of locked-in system. And I'm calling them the frozen neighborhoods. I'm really an author. I personally, as a visual author, I kind of not necessarily lean towards dystopia, but I lean more towards a kind of critique of you know, the systems and, and, and where the systems are failing. 